Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. And in this multi-part episode series, we are going to be building a weather application using Open Weather Map API in SwiftUI and using the MVVM design pattern. Now, let's go ahead and first take a look at our completed product that you will be building. You can see the first screen is city screen and it doesn't really display anything because we haven't really added any cities. So let's use the plus button to add a particular city. This is a city that you want to get the weather of. So I'm going to go ahead and type in Houston and I will say save. And you can see that it displays Houston along with the current weather, which is in Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and add another city over here. I'm just going to go ahead and say Austin. And or Houston, Austin, pretty much the same weather. Let's go ahead and go to Boston. Okay, a little bit different. And you can also enter cities uh, which are somewhere else. All right, so I can go ahead and uh, call as, like I can go ahead and say San Francisco, obviously, but I can also pick any city I want from anywhere in the world. So let's go ahead and say Mexico City. Mexico City. And you can see, so it works either way. Now the settings icon over here, it will allow you to change the temperature because in some parts of the world, the temperature is in Celsius. In America, in US, it is in Fahrenheit. And you can also change it to Kelvin. All of the setting information will be stored in the app storage, meaning the user defaults. And as soon as I change it, you can see the temperature now change to 16 cent uh, Celsius, 14 Celsius, 5 Celsius, and so on. I can also go ahead and change it to Kelvin, and now it changes to Kelvin. I'm in US, so I'm more interested in Fahrenheit, so I can go ahead and enter Fahrenheit. So this is the application that we'll be building. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the starter code as well as the Open Weather Map API. So let's start with the Open Weather Map. Since this particular application will be using the Open Weather Map API to get the actual weather, you need to go to openweathermap.org and make sure that you're signed in. Once you sign in, you will be able to get the API key. So let me go ahead and sign in. And now you can see that I'm signed in. And I can look at my account. I can log out from my account. I can go ahead and refresh. And I can go to API. If you go to API, you can see all the different APIs. And you can also see my API keys. If I go to my API keys, you can see these two keys. I would recommend that you use your own key and not these keys because both of these keys will be expired by the time you're using it. So go ahead and sign in and then generate or create a brand new key for you. Now, if I go to the API, which is this link, you can see there are many different APIs available using Open Weather Map. I'm going to be using the Current Weather Data API, which is just going to provide me with the current weather data. But if you're looking for hourly forecast of four days or daily forecast for 16 days, then you can check out different APIs. Let's go ahead and click on the API documentation. And this will take you to the documentation page where it will show you that how you can interact with the API. So you can see right now that we can interact with the API by using the city name. And in this URL, we will pass in the city name and obviously the API key. So API key is basically required for every single endpoint you will have to pass in. See over here, you are using by city ID, so you can pass in the city ID and the API key. And by latitude and longitude, again, you're passing the latitude and longitude and also API key. We will be using the city name, so we will simply pass in the name of the city, like Houston or Austin or Boston or San Francisco, and we will pass in the API key to get our data. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of those responses. Over here, you can see that I'm passing Houston and I'm passing my key and I'm also passing units equals to imperial. Imperial basically means that I'm interested in the 
Fahrenheit. Now, if I go ahead and remove units equal to imperial, then it's going to give me the default will be in Kelvin, as you can see over here. Also, you can go ahead and go to the secure URL, which is HTTPS. There we go. So you can see that it returns you the JSON object, which has properties like coordinates, weather, base, main, visibility, wind, clouds, sys, and so on. So over here, we'll be using, primarily we'll be using the main to get the temperature, which is right here. And we will be using SYS, where we'll be using the sunset and sunrise. And we will also be using the name property. So all of this JSON response has to be decoded into some sort of a models that we'll be building. The final thing that you want to do is you want to download the code, the starter code. And I will add this particular URL right there in the YouTube description so you can check out the starter code. Now, when I talk about starter code, what does that even mean? So let's go ahead and take a look at our project with the starter code. Okay, so here is our application. This is the starting point of your application. You can see all of these different folders being created for you, but most of the starter code is here to just help you out with the user interface or some utilities, as we'll go through each one by one. You can see in the screens folder, I have weather list screen. And if you run this, it's simply going to give you some dummy data. So it's all displaying the screen and that's it. You can see we also have a weather cell over here, but we are not really using the weather cell. So it's all mainly designed for the user interface. The add city screen is used to add a city. So we created that interface. And the setting screen simply consists of a segmented control or a picker, which allows us to select Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. In the extension folder, we have a number of extensions like view extension to embed a view in a navigation view, date extension to format the date so it can be displayed, string extension to make sure that the string is escaped correctly so we can pass in words like Los Angeles, San Antonio to the URL, and the user default extension to persist our temperature settings. In the models folder, we have just one model, which is weather, which consists of two different structures, weather response and weather, and both of them are empty. The services is where we will actually make the request. So this has a bit of code that allows us to make a URL request by a function called get weather by city, but it doesn't really do anything with the response. So we still have to implement that part. In the utilities, we have constants.swift, which contains the URL of the service, which means the API for the weather map. We also have a separate function, which allows us to fetch a particular icon based on the weather. View model folder is empty. Global state is empty. Loaders consist of image loader, which is used by the URL image view. And the URL image view is actually used to load an image based on the URL, and it load, loads using the image loader. So make sure that you download the starter project, and then you will have all the pieces that you need to get started with this application. And the link, once again, for the starter project is right there in the YouTube description. So click on it, download it, open up the project, and you will see something similar. If you run the application right now, it's not really going to do anything because we still have to create our models, we still have to create our view models, and we have to do a lot of work to get it to work correctly. So let's go ahead and get started. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. Also, there's also a Patreon link, so if you want to become a patron, you can see that I have a lot of courses on iOS development, Swift UI, as well as Flutter development. My new course just launched a couple of weeks ago, which is about Flutter and Firebase development. I also have a very long, lengthy course on Swift UI, which is 21 plus hours long, and I keep on adding content to it. 
If you want to learn MVVM design pattern, then I have a course for you. RX Swift, Combine, I have courses for every single thing, including the server side Swift using Vapor. So the best way to get these courses would be to check out the links in the YouTube description. And I recommend that you use those links because if you use those referral links, I get to get a little bit more revenue as compared to if you just go and search it on YouTube or if you go search it on Udemy on your own. Uh, thank you so much for your continuous support and uh, hope you enjoy these videos.